In a secret location, deep in the countryside of New England, lies your favorite grassroots car brand. Atomic Auto Works Garage. What is going on, my Atomic Auto Works friends? So, we started this video and then I had a customer drive all the way up here and I wanted to explain, as we're making this transition, um, if you call and leave a voicemail, we'll call you back. It's going to take a few days because literally we have hundreds and hundreds of calls and emails. I'm trying to one by one, knock out the job, get it done and get it out there. I don't want anybody to think that any other stuff is MIA or we're not going to be able to finish it. It's just we're on a skeleton crew trying to finish everything up at the quality level we expect and want and then we're going to get it out to you. With our full transparency that we're trying to do, which isn't fully transparent because if you knew the full transparency, You'd be like, things are going crazy. I wanted to show you what we're doing, how we're trying to knock things out. Guys have been diligently in the shop, packaging up cars that are going out that we don't really want to go, but I understand it because we're so behind and it's so difficult for us to find this proper skill level of people that we want to work with. And we're overwhelmed with work. You know, it's, it's just an abundance. And as our industry shrinks down and there's less people doing it, the few of us that are in it, doing it at a really good high quality level, we get overwhelmed and inundated with work and it's overwhelming because back in the day, these companies were personal. We could talk to the people, I could talk to the people, I could go in the shop and work. And it was a lot calmer. Now with inflation and everything the way it is, everything's so crazy that it's hard to have that kind of business anymore. But it's also hard to have a business where you have people answering the phone that don't know what they're doing and, mis and mislead people unintentionally, but just tell people the wrong things. We're at a really weird, weird point in this industry. We wanna show you what we're doing, how we're doing it, and how we're going about it because, again, we have some really cool things in the future that we are doing. And what's funny is cameraman Lewis is supposed to be the cameraman today. I might as well have had a tripod. He just stood perfectly still the whole time. And he was supposed to be like, I'm the cameraman. But anyways, let's go in and see what the guys are doing. Okay guys, we're trying out this new microphone. Where's Rick? Don't break my stones, Rick. I got this rig going because my hand's too weak to hold it up. No. <laughs> Come on, old man. So guys, what are we doing here? We're trying to pack everything up. Yeah. Ooh. Look at how neat. Cool. Everything's getting racked up, clean and neat. Yeah. Unfortunately, as much as we want to finish the Camaro, the customer wants to pull it and we are fine with that at this point. So we're gonna put all the parts together for him nice and neat. We're gonna to try to get the convertible top all together and done for him. And you can see we have the Mustang over here. We're gonna actually do the wet setting and buffing over in the main building. Gives Keon some room over in the body shop to wrap up things. Yeah, there he, he is, body me. man. He think about me, he thinking about me. <laughs> Always. Look at, Lewis loves Keon. You say something, he's always smiling. Like It's like you're his little baby. Yeah, they, they call me Kevin Hart, bro. They call me Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart? Well, Kevin Hart was at P. Diddy's party. No, he was not. They about the height of no, Kevin he was Hart. Not. He better not have that. I'm going to look it up. Who's it was. Kevin they showed it. They said they were really tight. Didn't they say they were really tight? No. Look at you get all defensive. You're damn right. It's almost like you're talking about how you milk a cow. <laughs> We, we, uh, how do you tell you milk a cow? What do you think happens when you milk a cow? You want me to say it for real? I you gotta say it. I thought it got f I never milked a cow before. I'm from the city. City boy. City boy. <laughs> city boy. I asked, I said, so what happens when you milk a cow? Are you, does it, you Why would you think that? What Why you would you think that? Why would it, like, you, right, do, you, you think mothers get when they have to breastfeed their children? I don't know, right? No, but they do. I... Okay, let's go to a different yeah, conversation. This is getting, this is getting, too, this is getting too heated. Back, back to cars. Back to where did Rick go? Rick was the whole. He was loving the fact that you city boys don't like <laughs> know nothing about you, cows and stuff. Hey, yo, I told Rick. I said, Yo, you're, you're a funny guy, and you teach me a lot, bro. He's like, I'm the one that does the research. I am a salesman's <laughs> worst nightmare. Yeah, oh. that's why you gotta keep him around. So we got the other mics back on because that shotgun mic we were using sucks. Not worth it, right? Oh, you didn't see the video yet. The video. It sounds like major echoing and these are way better because you just talk normally. So we're gonna try to use these more. What we're doing here, trying to finish everything up, moving in the right direction, wet sanding, was well, actually we're dry sanding it. On the higher end cars, 
We'll start with a six or 800 grit, dry sand, sand it down, make sure it's perfect. Um, I'll do a picture over to show you this. And what we're doing is because Lewis is new, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I tell people to tape off the body lines with an aggressive grit because you can go through them because when you clear coat, you know, body lines like a sharp point. So the paint doesn't want to sit on top of it, slides off of it. So you get a little less paint on there. And even though there's a lot of paint on here, we put a lot of paint on knowing we're up to cut a couple layers off. You still don't want to go through a body line at this stage. So we're going through, we're dry sanding this right now. And then we're going to go from, we're only doing 800 because the paint laid out pretty flat on this car and customer doesn't really want a super show car. Um, it's just everything we do that has our name on it. We try to do it a little better. It's tough because you'll see when you go to a car show, as soon as it has our name on it, everybody's like, instantly critiquing it. So we have to do a really nice job. This one here, we're only doing it to 800 grit. So we're starting off, we're gonna sand the whole car. Every single inch of this car gets sanded with 800 grit, then 1000 grit, then 1200 grit, then 1500 grit, then 2000 grit, then 3000 grit and 5000 grit. So there's a lot of sanding that goes on and people don't understand, like you'll see, especially sometimes when you hire people and train them, they'll just assume you just go like this and you get scratches on it. But Lewis has learned the honest way, the truthful way that you sand a little area when it's perfect, you move to the next step. So there's a lot that goes involved in this. And this is what we're doing today, except for Kian. We're going to run over there and check on Kian because Kian is finishing up an Equinox. Not exactly the dream car you want to have, but it might be a nice car to run your kids to school and travel around town. And we'll run over there and talk to him. You got to get you an Equinox. No, <laughs> no Equinoxes for me. I want this, that, 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 all these things. No Hondas. All the Hondas. <laughs> so what do you think about sanding? Oh, you, show them your finger. Look at this. <laughs> you got to stand in front of the camera. Look at how messed up. He, he says he's having trouble sanding because his finger looks like that. <gasps> that is horrible. <laughs> that is, that's one of the grossest things I've seen hey. to date. No, I've seen some pretty gross stuff, but that's weird. Top 10? Yeah, that's pretty weird. I can, how do you do that? Uh, I think I broke my finger at some point or another. Uh, it's, it looks like it has a personality of its own. Uh. It's like those little, um, you know, those toys that you like pop inside out and you put them somewhere and they shoot up. Yeah, that's, that's your finger. That's kind of how my finger is. <laughs> that's so horrible. <laughs> okay, so actually, well, we're, we're going to go over and look at Keon really quick because he's on his own. I left him on his own over there. It's quiet in here today. Well, it's quiet because we can't have music playing because it messes up the videos rick's homesick so rick if you're watching this well actually he won't be watching it because by the time you see it hopefully you'll be better by no, then we got to tell his grandkids to continue oh, yes. watching yeah make sure you watch it the only reason actually rick was on this video i forgot because this is the video yeah. from yesterday so this is what happened we're trying to be transparent with shooting our videos so we just filmed the intro to this one because when we looked at us shooting the video before it wasn't really that good there was no intro in it Probably not that good now, but it's real. So we went and just did the intro for this video first. But ironically, when we started filming this part of the video, it was yesterday. This is like going back to the future. You ever see that movie no. with Michael J. Fox? You're old. Oh my God. So back to the future, when you go to, you don't, it gets confusing because we're in the future, but we're in the past. You know what's the only thing I know? 88 miles an hour. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing I know. We're going to sneak on Keon. See what he's doing. We tried the microphone, the shotgun mic yesterday. It didn't, it didn't work, work as well. Not as well as these ones do. I like these oh, you gotta pause your music. We don't wanna be demonetized. We know how you love to play your music and sing and dance. Lo-fi lo hip hop is where it's at. That's what keep my mind singing. It is good music though. It is, it is, bro. It's soulful. It's not, it's not a lot of words. It's just all good tunes, just straight beat. So. So what do you got going on here, Keith? I'm taking it Jan. upon myself, upon myself. <laughs> to get this these fenders prepped up and ready to paint. I'm going to be painting one of them. It's <laughs> my first one. Um, so we'll video that. Yeah, Who I'm, wants to see Keon's first paint job? Yeah, so I'm going to try it. I do feel a little bit comfortable, but this is going on the Equinox. I'm going to get this out as soon as possible so we can start working on the rockers and get that car out as soon as possible so we can get more rolling in. Other than that, I'm trying to stay in my zone, trying to stay locked in, <laughs> trying to get the work going. So what would you do here? Uh, right now, so what I did was I cleaned everything off first. First, first, first thing I did was check my pictures that I took to make sure that all the holes were the same so that way we ain't bring back the wrong part. I would have been mad. So normally we would actually test fit a panel before it goes on, but sometimes on the, the dealer work in the new cars, it's pretty common that they fit really, well, they fit yeah, like crap, but they all wonky, fit. Yeah. 
yeah, no. but they just go on. So to so save yeah. time, we just scuff them and go. Yeah, so after I did that, got them out the box, started scuffing them. Now once both of these panels are completely scuffed, I have to go back over it with their sealer surfacer. Sealer surfacer is something you can, with sandpaper, you can hit it off with the sandpaper. And then we're going to lay it, lay it up in the booth and we're going to start spraying. That's it. Bada bing, bada boom. Baby. <laughs> hey, now you're Italian. Yeah, I told oh, you are, you. yeah. Look I, at this look. guy's a little bit of Italian, a Sicilian, Jamaican. Yeah, Puerto Rican. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I got it all in me. That's scary. A little bit of everything. Got it all in you, me. Are you Chinese and Indian in there? <laughs> I think that's there's somewhere else. I don't want to show you that tag. <laughs> <laughs> so on these ones here, we're doing what you call panel to panel, which you never want to do on new vehicles because because panel to panel means you paint one panel and have to put it up adjacent to the other panel. With new paints, with the metallics and the pearls and all that stuff, they almost never match. So you're not supposed to do that. But on some of the pre-owned vehicles, it's not cost effective, especially now with the high price of used vehicles. So we're going to put Keon to the test because he did a color match and he says it's so good, that was, he'll be able bussing. to do panel to panel. It was Okay, what was that, Keon? It was busting. It was hitting. It was <laughs> It was there. You think it's the one? I think I, paint, I painted the OEM panels. So we're going to know at the end of the day today. Yep, we're going to find out.